Hi everyone. Good morning. So today we are going to discuss about a electric vehicle AIS standards or compliance. Okay. So what is this AIS? Okay. AIS is nothing but automotive industrial standards or industry standards. Okay. So what is this AIS? You can see here the battery, battery banks. This all about uh, what happens to the battery if you are not following the AIS standards and how this NMC battery catches the fire and how this LFD battery will discuss in detail. So this is we are going to today discuss about uh, what is meant by this AIS 156. So these are nothing but charge complaint. Okay. So some rules are nothing but um, some set of rules okay, has been framed out uh, by the automotive industrial standards. Uh, actually what happened is so this A1Y AIS 156 uh, was given by Ministry of Road, Ministry of Road, Transportation and Highway Authority. So, which is called as uh, Ministry of Road Transportation Highway Authority has issued some rules uh, where this is called AIS 156. Uh, what should be the quality of charger or what kind of rules the charger has to follow? So, to prevent uh, the explosion of uh, battery, battery cells, and how this cell failures occurs uh, and how this blast. Okay. So, what are those problems? Uh, are addressed in this AIS 156. If you use a proper charger, automatically all this kind of explosion can be prevented. Now let us try to see here. So this AIS is nothing but uh, will form some set of rules. Okay. So they what going what they are going to take care is nothing but uh, this automotive industrial standards. Uh, so it gives some set of requirements of uh, a how an charger should be what kind of rules a charger has to follow. So first one is uh, we can understand that uh, if I, we use AIS 156 charger compliant uh, then we are 100% safe. Okay. So first one is uh, these chargers should have should follow this uh, over voltage protection. So first one is uh, over voltage protection. So if any charger satisfies uh, this A is standards then first what in the future it should have is a uh, it should have over voltage protection so the charger should be able to charge the battery only 100 percentage after getting charged it should automatically perform cutoff of the charging to prevent uh, overcharging okay if you want to prevent this overcharging the charger should automatic cut off or they can use some timer based charging based upon the level of battery. So based upon the level of battery, for example, 50% of the battery is there. Okay. And how much has to be charged? 50. In order to charge 50%, they have to use some timer. So to charge this, for example, you have an uh, battery and in this battery, 50% is already charged. So 50% we are having an empty to make it full. So we have an uh, calculation. So by using that calculation, we should be able to predict uh, what the time required to charge this 50% and after this time automatically the charger should cut off. That is called as uh, the one of the safety rule what they have to follow in the case of uh, over voltage protection. And they should also they can use the timer based or soft start function okay so a small relay can be used which is nothing but uh, a small relay can be used which can enable a soft start of the charger and charger should have a function to detect uh, the battery's overcharge for example if the battery is a uh, hundred percent charge so charger should identify this uh, state of charge and should automatic cut off the charger itself is automatic cut off. There is no chance of 
over voltage going into the battery and which is creating a self value which is creating to a thermal runaway which is leading to explosion of battery okay so this is like uh, all the batteries what you see here uh, is nothing but you have two types of batteries nickel metal cobalt uh, batteries and next one is um, lithium ferrous phosphate battery lithium ferrous phosphate all these are lithium batteries only so this is nothing but lithium only but nickel metal cobalt so this can easily catch the fire but lf batteries doesn't catch the fire easily so what are the problems is so the battery the cell the individual cell may undergo cell failure due to over voltage or over charging so this may lead to heating of the battery where heating of the battery at the separator increases uh, automatically this may lead, lead to and fire catching the fire okay or battery explosion this can be avoided by reducing the overcharging of the battery by following the standards of AIS certified charger okay so there's nothing but this will help you this AIS first rule is uh, you have to use over voltage protection and automatic the battery charger has to cut off and they may use a timer based or soft switching function and this AIS should they should have a function of uh, the battery is 100% charged automatically should cut off or the charger should have a function to detect if the battery is overcharged okay so it has to prevent the concept of uh, overcharging also okay so now we are not overcharging the battery and battery it's i mean we are not overcharging the battery and the charger itself uh, is able to cut off therefore battery doesn't undergo any explosion next one is a uh, battery pack level what are the safety rules we need to follow it battery pack level okay so next one is a battery pack what kind of safety we have to use to fulfill this standard okay so battery pack should have the protection of ip67 so what is ip means ip means ingress protection the act of getting inlet is called as ingress and this six is called as a best rating and where this seven is called as a, if you immerse this battery in water for 30 minutes and one minute also the battery bank can be safe so water cannot go into the battery so if you want to design the battery as per the standard the next tool they had given is a, regarding battery pack design it should be satisfy ip67 ip is nothing but ingress protection the act of getting uh, entry is called as ingress is nothing but uh, if anything enters this act of entering so the act of entering it is having a protection of uh, six for dust and seven for water so this is called perfect way of manufacturing a battery and all this battery pan should maintain a pressure relief vent okay so they should have an pressure relief vent okay so whenever your battery undergoes uh, charging from 0% to 100% and it may discharge uh, from 100 to 0% uh, while charging and discharging uh, so the metals used in this battery which is nothing but uh, nmc which is nothing but lithium nickel metal cobalt nmc batteries so they undergoes lot of chemical actions of a charging as well as discharging uh, automatically some heat and gas is released and this gas has to be or gas and pressure is also released uh, while charging and discharging uh, this has to be sent out but you have to provide one vent or you have to provide some opening to release this pressure therefore every battery pack should have ip67 protection and a pressure vent to discharge this heat gases and the pressure which are developed inside the battery so that is all about the battery pressure maintain and so all the battery pack should have one more standard the standard is nothing but uh, the battery pack should have at least uh, four sensor okay so first sensor it should be able to detect or the internal temperature of the battery so first sensor they have to use is 
temperature sensor and second one they have to use the traceability okay where the battery wiring has been shorted or open circuited next one they should have the paralleling circuit so if one circuit goes wrong they have to use parallel such a way that uh, they can service the battery and they can restore okay and next one you have to provide proper document of how the battery is wired or spot welded okay so every battery pack should have temperature sensor to identify what is the internal temperature of the battery okay so what is the internal temperature of the battery we have to identify with the help of an temperature sensor and they should be have the concept of tracing out where open circuit occurs or short circuit occurred inside the battery that should be easily traced out okay? so by using uh, some sensors so where you can identify where the wind where the batteries have been shorted okay so which will lead to when the battery is shorted which will lead to increment of current okay? so they should have a sensor a current sensor to identify the how much current has been increased and how to make the battery of it's called easily have able to trace where the fault has been occurred and already one circuit will be running so to connect the batteries so in parallel to this and one more circuit also should run if for example if this damages so at least the next one will be used for servicing okay so all the battery manufacturer should use a parallel circuit and they have to provide some documents so how the wiring is given and what are the terminals and how to wire it so all these rules has to be followed in the domain of battery pack safety they have to use ip67 protection and they have to provide one safety pressure vent and they have to follow they have to use all these sensors and how to trace where the battery has been damaged so and they have to use some sort of state of charge which is nothing but percentage amount of battery and to identify the depth of discharge and voltage measurement actually all these parameters voltage measurement and current measurement all this will be generally available in battery management system i'm coming to the next one so sir if the heat increases or kind of safety we are going to provide third one is thermal propagation thermal propagation what is this thermal propagation thermal is nothing but heat propagation how the heat is propagated okay so this system should have an so when you when you have this increment of heat so this ev should have an audio visual so they have to produce some sound so audio visual warning should be provided okay so for example if the battery is overheated so when you get uh, the sun i mean cyclone or something else uh, you'll get an alarm in your mobile which makes your uh, computer screen to become dark and it makes uh, like emergency sos button okay so like this whenever the battery is getting overheated or temperature increases uh, we they have to we have to provide some uh, audio and higher uh, higher uh, sound so where this will create an warning to the customer such a way that uh, the customer can take and measures how to stop this uh, fire so warning if a thermal run away so if any thermal run away is occurring okay so if any heat of temperature or gradual increment of the temperature is happening inside the battery they need to have some audio visual warning alarm if all this overcharging protection battery pack safety protection and thermal propagation is you can see here so actually what happens is uh, If the battery is overheated it may be due to manufacturer side problem or using fast charging or they may be using an uh, wrong charger or it may be an uh, improper charging of uh, batteries using an improper charger and there may be a there may be an over voltage problem all this may lead to burning of one battery or some two of said batteries to completely propagate the burning of complete batteries so to overcome all this this AIS is nothing but automotive industrial standards has been fixed from the Ministry of Road and Transportation and Highway. So there is nothing but uh, we should have first safety one is over voltage protection. We should automatically cut off a timer based cut off and stop start 
and it should prevent the battery from over charging that's what and a perfect uh, charger should have and second part coming to the battery pack level the battery should have a safety of ip67 and they should leave um, pressure vent and they have to use some temperature sensor traceability and parallel circuit and the way they have been documented next one thermal propagation if the temperature increases due to thermal runaway so this thermal runaway or thermal propagation is explained here if any thermal propagation occurs the temp the temperature increases or the heat increases in a battery that will be identified by our temperature sensor automatically in your uh, display of electric vehicle you have to produce you have to provide some audio warning or audio visual warning here in such a way that thermal runaway has been that you have to shut down the vehicle so all this is knowing about uh, automotive industrial standards that are to be maintained in a charger okay so this ais will give some sort of uh, charger complaints or the rules that has to be followed in a charger so if you use this kind of ais 156 certified chargers uh, automatically all these features will be available there's no we can at least control the problem due to over voltage or thermal runaway or we can directly reduce this propagation where the battery never blast okay so this is all about uh, ais hope you are able to understand this uh, ais standards uh, in an electric vehicle so hope the video is uh, useful so please if you feel the video is useful please give one like and share with your friends uh, and if you have any doubts let me know in comment section and please encourage your friends and remaining you those who are interested in electric vehicle to subscribe our channel in the name kv philosophy so till i have given you the sufficient knowledge to understand this automotive industrial standards yours obediently from i kindly request you people to encourage this sort of useful channel where it can give the sufficient knowledge to you and to the students those who are working in electric vehicle so my this will be benefit to the public as well as the society so viewers obediently now thank you for watching the video